something stressful this way comes. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is the 6th of May. It is very dreary and wet here today and I am in full thumb mode, as we call it around here. Uh, today is the coronation of King Charles III and yeah, I have not watched it. Um, I've never really had a particularly strong opinion on the royals. I kind of don't really care either way if we have them or don't and I'm sure there are pros and cons for each side, but to spend hundreds of millions of pounds from the taxpayer at a time where we have more food banks than um number of mcdonald's in our country is just obscene so yes i haven't been watching today because i'm just not in the mood for my blood pressure to be that high to be honest it just seems complete well it is completely unnecessary to spend that much money on a man who is a billionaire himself and could easily have paid for it himself like that's my problem with it so yeah i haven't been watching it today i have been working marking and all that kind of stuff as usual we've got charlie here with us for the long weekend which is nice and yeah i just realized i hadn't opened this vlog yet so i thought i would do that whilst i take a break from all the other stuff that i'm getting up to this weekend i've got two books to talk about i finished one already and then i've had one come in already so we're, we're balanced one in one out um the book that i have finished is the villa by uh ruth kelly um this as you can see is a proof it comes out in june i don't know if i've got a specific date uh 20 22nd of june uh this comes out in paperback and a lot of people at book break sent this to me in exchange for an honest review and this is kind of love island turned deadly uh we've got 10 contestants on a new tv show and oh it's, just, it's not a tv show it's like streamed live over the internet and we follow one of the contestants um, as she goes into this program and then we're also got the perspective of the producer as well and we know from the start that somebody's ended up dead and you're trying to work out who's ended up dead and how has that happened like who's responsible for it and yeah i gave this three stars is the first thing to say i didn't love this um i also thought that i'd read this author before but i was confusing them with erin kelly this is a kind of a debut ruth kelly is a ghostwriter um and i have actually read her work before because she was the writer the ghostwriter for the prison doctor which i read earlier on this year i feel like um so this is her like debut under her own name and yes there were some there were positives about this so it was really fast paced and it was gripping and i liked some of the commentary that it had to had um to give on reality tv and actually how it's not reality at all the the name reality is a complete misnomer so i really liked how that was dealt with um i didn't love there's a lot of um kind of the bad guy is the bad guy because of their mental health like that kind like it was veering towards that i didn't love how mental health was represented in this or how it was dealt with and then it did something at the end and i was like no like it was just super like the ending like really irritated me to be honest so yeah this was fine it wasn't offensive it was definitely one of those books i read it in two days i read it in two sittings it's definitely one of those like read it by the pool and then probably just leave it by the pool and forget about it um i feel like this won't stick with me and i feel like that's a bit frustrating because it had a really good premise I really like the premise and the setup but it just didn't quite deliver for me so that was a three star so there was that one and then the book that i have bought is this one and isn't it so pretty this is still life by sarah winman this was recommended to me directly by the lovely amelia from amelia barlow books she did the most beautiful um video for her one year on booktube i'll link it in the description um where she basically recommended books to people who have kind of helped support her channel um in its first year and she was kind enough to recommend this for me and i've seen this about a bit and a few people have said that i might like it but when she like directly went out of her way to recommend it to me and she also said it's one of her favorite books i was like Do you know what that's a sign i'm gonna buy it so i bought it and here it is i don't even really know much about it like i said i'll have linked her video and she sold it to me so go and watch how what she said because 
I'm sure she'll sell it to you as well. But basically it's historical fiction and it's got lots of descriptions of food and like found family or like family saga type stuff. So I was like, yep, sign me up. The cover is, is glorious. There was a, oh, look at the end pages. There was a paperback version, but oh, it just wasn't as nice. Look how nice that hardcover is. And it's set in Italy, I think, which, you know, is where I'd always rather be. Yeah, Tuscan villas and stuff. And she sold that to me, so I will be reading this. I think I'm probably going to put it on my June tea bell. My May one is looking a little bit huge at the moment, but I will be picking this up very soon. So thank you again, Amelia, for your lovely, lovely, kind words and recommending me this book. Um, So plan for the rest of the day is gonna get some stuff done i was gonna have a lazy day today it was a it was a rough week at work even though it was only three days long because we had the bank holiday on monday tuesday was on strike and then three days of school but i've not felt very well covid is doing the rounds again at school um and i've been testing and coming up negative but i still i haven't i just haven't felt 100 percent um so it's been a bit of a rough week and behavior at school has been challenging this week so that's always fun um so it's been a busy week and last night I was like, I'm not working tomorrow, I'm just going to relax. And then I got up this morning and I was like, oh, I need to get my marking done. Gary had some work to do, Charlie was doing his homework and I was like, I should just get on, like, crack on and do it. So my marking is done and now I'm like, I'm going to get a few more jobs. I've got quite a long to-do list on my uh, notepad for the weekend. Um, I'm going to get a few things ticked off and then have a bath and chill this after like this evening and read. Um, and then tomorrow, hopefully the weather's going to be better, fingers crossed, because Gary and I went to the garden centre last weekend, which you'll have seen at the end of my April vlog, which I'll link in the description. Um, and we've got a whole load of plants that we haven't even planted in yet because it's just rained ever since. So hoping tomorrow will be better um, because Charlie will jet wash the patio and our front steps. Whilst he's doing that, I'll sort out the beds and put take out all the stuff that's dead and the weeds which is all that's there at the moment um and then put the new stuff in and whilst i'm doing that gary will cut the grass and get that sorted out and put the hammock up so hopefully by the end of tomorrow we'll have a nice garden or a nicer garden um with my hammock in it and then monday will just be for relaxing so that's the plan i'm gonna put my headphones in i'm currently listening to the audiobook of colts i've forgotten the author's name but i'm really enjoying that so i'm sure you'll see me review that very shortly and yeah just gonna get on on this dreary day get a few jobs done and then relax and read It's the 8th of May and yes, I'm trying out a different angle in my bedroom. I'm currently squished between Gary's side of the bed and our ensuite bathroom uh, because it's the weekend, it's the bank holiday weekend. Charlie's downstairs gaming with his friends. Gary's working in his office, so I'm running out of places I can like sit and chat to you guys uh, in the house. So here we are, we're gonna try this one out. Um, we've had a quite a nice bank holiday weekend. Uh, Saturday, I worked. <laughs> Most of the day, got my marking done and out of the way. I'm currently, at this very second, up to date with my marking, which will last until Tuesday lunchtime, tomorrow lunchtime, when the next cycle of assessments will start. Yay! But anyway, I got that done. Yesterday we spent in the garden, 
for spent probably two hours, two and a half hours, the three of us working really hard. We had Charlie on the jet washer, I was doing the pots and the beds, um, and then Gary was cutting the grass and weeding and like sweeping. We've got um gravel that we've got down outside. So he was kind of sweeping that up and put it back, putting it back where it's supposed to be. Uh, and it's looking loads better. I mean, our garden is always gonna be a bit pants, I think, because one, we're not massive gardeners, and two, we live in a new build estate. So one, it's very small, and two, it's like the quality of the grass that we've got is pretty pants. But it's looking better, and because we are very exciting humans, Gary and I are gonna buy some garden furniture between us as our wedding anniversary present in June. Our anniversary is in June, but we'll probably buy it before that. Uh, because we have been will we we will have been married five years in June, and the traditional gift for year five is wood. So it made sense to buy a couple of lounges for the garden. Uh, my hammock is not up yet. If you are new to the channel. Our first year of marriage, which is cotton, uh, we bought a hammock and it is my favourite thing in all the world. Uh, and I will spend, you will definitely see it if you stick around long enough because I spend most of the summer in the hammock if I'm not at work. Um, it's not quite time to get it out yet because it's the weather's still quite changeable. Today's really grey. Um, but we've got everything else ready, so that's nice. And then today we've been into Bristol by myself. Um, Gary was working again. Um, Charlie was just hanging out being 13. And so I took myself off into Bristol for a little kind of solo date. Bumped into my brother-in-law and his girlfriend, which was nice um, just to see them briefly. And then I've been and had bubble tea. I got taro, which was a Hannah's recommendation from H Hannah L. Palmer, R. Palmer. I'll link her below. She's an author tuber and also booktuber. Um, and she suggested taro, which I was like, sure, I'll give it a go. Um, just got a little one in case I didn't like it, but I really liked it. I'm not even sure what it is. I need to look up what it actually is, but it was like this like deep purple color. Um, and it's a milk tea. I haven't had milk tea before. So I thought I'd give that a go. And it kind of tastes like popcorn is how I would describe it or like nutty. It was really nice. It was really savory. I had blueberry bubbles, or blueberry, blueberry boba with it, which is very nice. So I did that, had a really good wander around, spent an hour in, Waterstones and I have three books to show you from that. Um, when I got some sushi, I went to Foils, didn't get anything in there, but just had a really lovely wander around, went to get Krispy Kreme donuts for the boys on the way back. And then I also got myself a mango, no, a white peach bubble tea with mango boba to bring home, which is currently in my fridge. And as you can probably hear, I'm really tired. I'm feeling a bit weird. I had, oh, just need the wall. I had quite a bad, interaction with a student on last thing on Friday afternoon which obviously I'm not going to go into massive detail here but it was scary it's probably like the best expl explanation I can give um you know I'm a third year teacher now stuff happens sometimes uh but yeah it was a bit it was a bit scary on Friday so I'm feeling a bit wobbly about going back to work tomorrow um so yeah there's that. But I have bought some books and I've finished a book. So let's talk about the book I finished first. Oh, and I've had, literally as I was getting ready to film this clip, the Amazon van arrived with a delivery for me and it's from my wish list. So we'll open that together as well. So it's all very exciting. Okay, so the book that I finished is An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. This was sent to me for Christmas by the lovely Cat at Bruise and Review. So thank you, Cat. I read The Deep by River Solomon. It might have been 2020. And... I was just kind of emotionally crushed by that book. So I was slightly hesitant going into this because I know Rivers, Rivers Solomon is a writer that can absolutely destroy me. This was their debut novel and we're following Asta who lives on this huge ship, um, spaceship called the Matilda. Um, I don't know if it's the Matilda or just Matilda. But anyway, and it says for generations, Matilda has ferried the last of humanity to a mythical promised land. On its way, the ship's leaders have imposed harsh moral restrictions and deep indignities on dark skinned sharecroppers like Esther. Um, and basically the setup is like the antebellum south. Um, and we're following Esther, who is part of the lower section of the ship. Um, as she is going about her day, she is um kind of growing herbs and is a healer the book opens with her performing an amputation on a young girl whose foot um needs to be amputated and we're just kind of following her existence and then um it says at the end of this um embroiled in a grudge with a brutal overseer Asta learns there may be a way to improve her lot if she's willing to sow the seeds of civil war and that's kind of, I don't want to tell you anymore. It's just one of those books that you just kind of need to pick it up and go for it. I gave this four stars. I thoroughly enjoyed it as much as you can enjoy something this brutal. And there are huge content warnings for 
slavery, um, for racism, colorism, for rape and sexual assault, for um, very graphic wound descriptions, for medical procedures, for um, all of the things that you would associate with slavery, basically, all of those things. River Solomon, as ever, does not flinch away from. Um, I, yeah, like I said, I gave this four stars. I didn't have the emotional connection to this that I had with The Deep, but this was River Solomon's debut novel, um, and I will definitely read other ones from them. Um, but yes, I'm glad I got to read this, so thank you, Kat. And yeah, that was a four star read from me. You can probably hear my voice, I'm really tired, so apologies if I'm a little bit waffly. Okay, then the three books that I bought today, <laughs> which were completely unnecessary, but here they are. So first of all, this one I didn't think was out until July. I actually made a little noise in Waterstones when I saw this on the shelf and then grabbed it because it was the last copy that they had. Um, and that is 19 Claws and a Blackbird by Augustina Bastarica, who was the author of Tender as the Flesh. Um, Amy from Amy Myers alerted me to the fact that this was coming out. I think it, she mm, tweeted about it or something in like January and I immediately pre-ordered it. Obviously cancelled my pre-order because it's here. And like I said, I didn't think it was due to be out in the UK until July, but here it is. Um, and this is a short story collection from the author of Tender as the Flesh. And I'm very, very excited to read this. Um, and I don't know what else to tell you really. Um, it says, shocking, brutal, yet glinting with sharp humour, 19 claws and a blackbird, is a breathtaking dive into the human monstrousness from a master of contemporary horror. And I'm very excited. There she is. Uh, okay. Um, she is an Ar Ar Argentinian. Argentinian? Yeah. Argentinian. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, writer. And it's been translated by Sarah Moses. So um, she's also the one who translated Tender as the Flesh, which if you haven't read it, is one of my favourite books of all times, but check the trigger warnings, the content warnings first. So I bought that one because I just saw it and I was like, oh, need. Then I saw um, The Boy on the Bridge by M.R. Carey. If you watched, I think it was March, question mark, I read, reread The Girl with All the Gifts. This is set in the same world. I don't think it's a direct sequel, but it's part of the world that um, M.R. Carey created for that. And I loved, I adored Girl with All the Gifts so much. And it's not even a book that I should have enjoyed because it's not my genre usually. Um, but all it says on the back is, Once upon a time in a, bl in a land blighted by terror, there was a very clever boy. The people thought the boy could save them, so they opened their gates and sent him out to the world to where the monsters live. I was like, yes. So I picked that one up as well. And then this one was a complete, not even a cover buy, it was a title buy. <laughs> okay, although the cover is also very cute. And it's A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. I don't think I've heard anyone talk about this. So if you're someone that I watch and you have talked about this, I'm sorry, it clearly just slipped past me. Um, but first of all, can we just enjoy the cover? And then it's it's like, it's fake dating, but it's kind, kind of giving me like um, Legends and Lattes vibes. Uh, Cause we've got Marielle is prophesied to be the most powerful witch seen in centuries, but she prefers baking bread to brewing potions. That's the point at which I was like, I'm having this book. When a spell goes very wrong, Mariel finds herself staring down a demon, one she inadvertently summoned for a soul bargain. Osroth the Ruthless is a legend among his kind, but ever since a bargain went awry, he's been a laughing stock. A deal with Mariel could earn him earn back his deadly reputation. However, getting Mariel to sign over her soul is going to be a lot harder than she than he anticipated. Osroth can't leave her side until she makes a deal, and becoming awkward roommates quickly escalates into real attraction. But Osroth is running out of time, and if he succeeds, he'll damn Mariel and their chances at love in the process. So yeah, I really just, I was just like, I'm definitely going to read this, and I might just, re I might start this today. So I was excited about that one. So that was all very nice. And then, like I said, as I was getting ready to film, this dropped through, and it's from my wish list. So in advance, thank you so very much to whoever it is that's sent me something. Um, there is never ever any expectation for people to use my Amazon wish list. I generally, genuinely um, use it to keep an eye on book prices because occasionally there's a sale or a price drops and I'm like, oh, I'll have that. Um, but I also really appreciate it when you guys use it to send me things. So what have we got here? Let's see if I can, I'm just trying to see if I can find a note first. Okay, that's the receipt. Oh this, oh, this is from Elaine. Enjoy, love your reading vlog so much from Elaine. This is so nice, thank you Elaine. I don't even know what it is yet, but thank you. Ooh, oh yes. The Devil You Know 
uh, Encounters in Forensic Psychiatry by Dr. Gwen Ashiet. I will find out how to say that. And Eileen Horn. I can't remember who I saw talking about this or if it was one of those random ones that I that came I came across on my own. Um, but basically, she's um, Dr. Gwen Adshead is one of Britain's leading forensic psychiatrists. She treats serial killers, arsonists, stalkers and other individuals who are usually labelled monsters. Whatever their crimes, she listens to their stories and helps them to better understand their terrible acts of violence. In The Devil You Know, Adshead invites the reader to step with her into the treatment room to meet 12 patients and presents a powerful case of rehabilitation over revenge, compassion over condemnation and empathy over fear. And actually, as I'm reading that, I think it might have been Hilary at Melted Books who's been talking about this. Someone was. And I was like, that sounds really interesting. Interesting. So thank you so much, Elaine. That's really kind of you. And now I have four new books to choose from. And the question is, where do I start? It's the 9th of May. And if you've watched any of my wrap up vlogs before you'll know that I don't usually come on to chat during the school week uh, because I'm usually just completely exhausted which I am um, but I finished a book last night and I've had a parcel come from my wish list which I want to open but obviously I want to open it on camera um, and also Gary is currently out taking Charlie to uh, where is he? Cadets. Um, so I thought I'd come on and do a quick clip. I am exhausted, so I apologise in advance if I make no sense. I've also got all three cats who are prowling around waiting for dinner. So apologies if there's chaos in that way as well. But yeah, last night I finished uh, The Old Woman with the Knife by Gu Byung Mo, translated by Chi Jung, Chi Yong Kim. Um, it's translated from Korean and it's very kindly sent to me by Canongate, who were the publishers a while ago. I think it was last year they sent this to me. First of all, can we just enjoy this cover? I mean, it's one of my favourite covers that I've seen for a while and it's got really cool French flaps. I mean, unfortunately, no, like, nice insides, but it's a very cool cover and I love, love, love the title. So I enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. I feel like, I don't know if it's the translation or just the style of the author or what it is, this book didn't quite feel like it knew what it was because it starts out with following, mm, what's the character's name? Horncl Horncloor, which by the way is a great name. And she's also got a, a, de a dog called Deadweight. It's Deadweight, isn't it, her dog? Yeah. She's in her 60s and she is a hired assassin. Um, and she is kind of, she's still active doing her job. The opening scene is her killing a guy on the subway um, and getting away with it. She's very good at her job. She's been doing it for a long time. And then there's this younger guy at work who is irritating her and kind of winding her up and getting in her way and all of that kind of stuff. Here comes Sav. She's just sniffing the camera. Oh my gosh, is she gonna knock you over? She might. Sav, can you, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so she's having like conflict with the guy at work basically. And that's the basic premise and setup. And the opening scene was really funny and quite humorous. And I was like, oh, okay, this is like grown up Sweet Pea. Like this is Sweet Pea in her 60s. And I was like, yes, I am on board with that. But then it becomes very literary fiction. So I thought I was getting like a thriller, like an aging assassin. And I was like, yes, I love books that have older protagonists. And this is a really interesting thought of like, you know, what would Sweet Pea be like? if she was you know if she gets to her 60s um but then it becomes very kind of philosophical about getting older in general and I really enjoyed that but it felt slightly disjointed from the rest of the story um there is also a really 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 long fight scene towards the end of this like pages and pages and pages long and I was like okay can we just get to the end of this um which just drags it down a little bit for me but I really enjoyed this it's very much just her kind of um talking about her life and looking back and reflecting on things that she's done and people she's killed and how she got to this point and why she's at this point and what's she going to do now the ending is sad it is obviously very dark and brutal this stuff um and there's also warnings for um animal death as well just to be aware of that um and various other things like obviously murder and violence and wound description um and things like that it's not a light book but for a kind of I feel like it should have either been aging Sweet Pea 
which if you don't know is a is a series of books by cj scoos which sweepy is one of my favorite books of all time um it's about a female serial killer um i felt like it should either have lent fully into that or fully into the kind of literary fiction meditation on what it is to be an older person particularly in this society she doesn't have a husband or kids no family um Whereas it was kind of not quite one thing, not quite the other. I still really enjoyed the writing style. I flew through it, gave it four stars. I would recommend. And it's still a very cool cover. So thank you very much to Canon Gate for sending that to me. And then, yeah, this has arrived. Ooh, let's not show my address to the internet. It's huge. It's from my wish list because it's got what Victoria read on the label. But it doesn't feel like a book. And I'm really confused. It's a weird shape. Let's just open it. So, yeah, let's see what this is. So being spoiled because I had one of these yesterday so thank you very much in advance to whoever this is oh that's why it's a weird shape there's two things in here and they're gift wrapped look at this oh my goodness whoever this is thank you so much you don't have to do this I think that's just a receipt um I've already said it once in this video because I've already been spoiled <laughs> once already this month look at this um None of you have to send me anything. I don't expect it. I don't expect you to do it. It's not required. You definitely don't have to gift wrap stuff. I mean, these gift bags are so useful. I keep them because I'm just that type of person and I re-gift stuff in them. At Christmas last year, Christmas just gone. Loads of these were like under our tree because um, they make really good gift bags. Okay, let's see who th this is from. Oh, from Lisa. She said, really wanted to gift something to you. Sorry, my brain is just not <laughs> functioning this afternoon. I've been teaching all day and then straight into a two hour meeting. Uh, so really wanted to give something to you. Your latest wrap up pulled me out of a three week reading slump. Glad I could help. Thank you so much, you lovely human from Lisa. So thank you so much, Lisa. Oh, what is this? Uh, the only downside with gift wrapping is now you guys watch me struggle to open the top of it. And now Sav's playing with a little scrap of paper down here. Is that nice? I don't really want you chewing that. It's got sticky stuff on it. Yeah, that's got glue on it. Let's have that over here. Okay, let's see what's in here. I'm so excited. What has she gone for? Ooh, let's play murder. Win or die trying. I nearly bought this yesterday by Kezia Lupo. Again, awesome cover. And this is about a virtual reality game where people then start dying. I mean, it's sci-fi, right? If it's in a in a VR game. But I just think it sounds really interesting. And I'm not going to read the whole back of it. But it just says, uh, when a, then when a player dies, Veronica has to ask herself if this is part of the game or if there's a real killer playing by their own rules. This may not be a game Veronica wants to play, but it's one she has to win or die trying. So that sounds really good. Sat enough standing on me. Do you want to come up and be in this clip? She's like, no, I'm just going to distract you whilst I do it and put my tail in the way of everything. Thank you so much. It's a great choice. I'm excited to read this. This was actually Sav. She's now trying to get in the box. Hang on, let me show you. Look. You getting in the box? She's like, no, just causing havoc. Don't mind me. Seriously. Um, she's set you up so you don't fall down. Um, yeah, this was in the young adult section yesterday, which I didn't know when I added to my Amazon wish list. I feel I think it was like an Amazon recommends you when they're like, oh, have you tried this? Um Again, really cool cover. But yeah, it was in the YA section, which I didn't know at the time to put on my wish list. But that's fine. So I will have a go at that at some point. That sounds very exciting. So thank you, Lisa. And then let's see if there's a different note on this. Hope you enjoyed both of these. Hope this term is being kind to you, Lisa. No, <laughs> this term has not been kind to me. But we manage. Year 11 start there, have their English exam. Their first English exam a week tomorrow, which quite honestly is making me feel a bit sick with nerves for them but we will get through it and it will be fine right let's see what's in this one. Oh, this is so exciting what a treat to come home to okay i can't get the book out there we go oh haven't i oh haven't i grown by sophie hannah i'm i might i say i might read this i've got my to read pile is there and it's humongous there is no way i'm getting through all these books this month sorry i keep scratching here i don't know if i've brushed up against something um but this sounds so intriguing and Chloe read it mm, last month and intrigued me and basically a woman sees her ex-best friend and she stops opposite her house like she can't resist like just going to check in on her ex-best friend and her kids are the same age they were like five years ago 
oh, 12 years ago. So 12 years ago, Thomas and Emily were five and three years old. Today, they look exactly the same. They haven't changed at all. How is that possible? I want to know how that's possible. I want to know. So that's very exciting. Two excellent, excellent choices. And I've been entirely spoiled. <laughs> so thank you, Lisa. That was so kind. You absolutely did not have to do that. But you have made my day. <laughs> so thank you so much. It's the 14th of May and I know it doesn't look like it but I have brushed my hair this morning. Um, it's Sunday and I am feeling really anxious today. Gary's gone to see his parents for a little bit this morning but I don't feel kind of up to human interaction so I've stayed at home. As you can see I'm in my pyjamas and yeah I, my anxiety is pretty bad today. Sorry for the background noise I've got all the windows open because it's suddenly really warm. Um, so yeah I'm feeling really anxious. Uh, the exams start tomorrow for my year 11s. Next week and the week after is going to be really chaotic in terms of timetabling because the year 11s need extra revision sessions for the exams they're going to do the following day. So my timetable is all over the place. I'm having to set cover left, right and centre. I'm being re-roomed because my room is one of the exam rooms. Um, and the whole thing is just stressing me out. Um, also one of the other members of the English team was unfortunately signed off with stress at the end of last week until at least the end of this term, possibly longer. And whilst it's definitely the right thing for that member of staff, um, and I'm glad they've gone to the doctors and are looking after themselves, like it does mean ultimately like more pressure on my shoulders, more cover lessons and where I thought I might get a bit of breathing space, I now won't. So it's all just a bit stressful. Um, so yeah, this is why I look like this. I literally, I keep jolting awake, which is something that hasn't happened to me for years. Uh, and I jolted myself awake at about quarter past five this morning. And the problem is that when the cats sense motion, any movement, and Sam's up there, they immediately climb on me because they think it's time for breakfast. So I then have to get up because I don't want them to wake Gary up. So yeah, I've been I've been awake uh, um, since the early hours of this morning. So I'm feeling mm, not great. We did have a lovely day yesterday. We went to Turtle Bay, just the two of us. A our friend of ours was supposed to come. Um, and meet us there but they couldn't in the end so we decided to go by ourselves anyway we had a great time I didn't even film any b-roll I haven't felt like filming I'm not sure what b-roll I've got between the last clip and this one you all obviously have just seen that um but just didn't really feel like being on camera so yeah I didn't really film anything yesterday but we had a lovely time and then came home and curled up and I read and I've got two books to talk to you about that I finished I've also got a book that arrived that I'd pre-ordered, which doesn't add to my TBR because I've already read it. I'll explain that in a minute. And then a lovely person on my April reading wrap-up asked to see a flip through of my reading journal, what they called a reading journal. I would never refer to this as my reading journal. Um, so I thought I would just quickly show you my notebook in a second. I'm just also listening out in case Gary comes back. So um, the first book that I finished was an audio book. And now that I know how to do it, the picture will appear here. Um, but I have also written it down because it's got a really long title and I'll never remember it. So it was called Cults Inside the World's, Mo no, bleh, Inside the World's Most Notorious Groups and Understanding the People Who Joined Them. And that was by Max Cutler. I listened to it on audiobook and it had like nine different narrators. Um, Chloe recommended this when I said that I'd really enjoyed Cultish. Um, because she'd read it, I think, for her, possibly for her Patreon crime, uh, Chloe's Crime Scene Corner reading um, group that she runs, or just possibly in other reading that she was doing. It's non-fiction, and basically this is based on a podcast, I think, of the same name. Um, and what Max Culler has done is taken either nine or ten specific cases, and each chapter is looking at a different cult. So it's like the Manson family and the Heaven's Gate um massacre 
and Jamestown, James, not Jamestown, Jonestown, I always say Jamestown, Jonestown Massacre, various different groups from around the world and looking at the cult leaders, how the cults came into being, why people joined them, why people stayed and ultimately what happened. Um, I gave this a really solid four stars. I thought it was really interesting. It was detailed. It's always interesting to look at the kind of psychology behind crime and why crime happens, but also why people would stay in a cult even when they're being stripped of their kind of human rights and stuff. Um, obviously, there are lots of content warnings because it is very brutal. It's very in-depth. They don't hold back any details. Some of it was quite distressing to listen to. Um, I gave it four stars because inevitably with this kind of thing, some of the chapters were way more interesting than others. And some got like too much into like politics at the time or religious stuff and I was kind of like I'm not really interested in this bit but overall it was really good and it was a really good listening experience because each chapter has a different narrator and I thought that was really good because it's a long audiobook I think it's like 17 hours long and you could easily if you had the same voice that whole way through could easily have zoned out so yeah I really enjoyed that gave it four stars I still prefer cultish I think that was a lot more accessible and easier to digest and also it looked particularly at the linguistics which as a huge language nerd that particularly pressed my buttons but yeah i really enjoyed that solid um audiobook recommendations on scribed and yeah that was an interesting reading experience and then i've also read yesterday i read cursed bread by sophie mcintosh this is really short it's 180 pages i started it yesterday and finished it this morning um this was shortlisted for the no it was longlisted for the women's prize for fiction for this year it didn't get shortlisted i don't think it could be wrong um I enjoyed this. So I know that Charlie called this boring bread. It was at the bottom, I think, of her or near the bottom of her ranking when she read the long list. Um, this is my brother's book, so I'll be sending this back to him uh, once I'm done with it this month. Um, I enjoyed this. So I've read everything that um, Sophie McIntosh has written. The Water Cure, I would say, is my least favourite. That was her debut. That was weird. And I felt like I didn't get it. I feel like it's one of those books I need to go back and reread at some point. Um, I really enjoyed, is it Blue Ticket? I always get confused with the colour, I think it is. Yeah, Blue Ticket, I really enjoyed that. I've got that up on my um, forever shelf up there, uh, which was weird, but it had a lot more plot to it. And I think this, for me, is in second place. Like, Blue Ticket is still my favourite, but I did enjoy this. This is kind of all vibes, no action, really. <laughs> um, and I can see why Charlie said nothing really happens in this book. We are following a woman called... What is her name? Elodie, which, by the way, is a name I've always loved. Um, they, she is in... We don't really get much sense of setting, and I can see why people would struggle with this. It's very, I would say, very high literary fiction, if that's a thing. It's very literary fiction. We're following a woman called Elodie, who is the baker's wife, and we're not given a time or place, although there's an author's note at the end that gives a little bit of context, because it's based on a real thing that happened or a real um, crime that happened. Uh, but anyway, she's the baker's wife and two, a new couple arrive in town and it's about her obsession with them. Um, her husband is no longer interested in her sexually and she becomes very obsessed with this couple. Um, and it's all about kind of um, lies and the relationships between people and it's about sexuality um, and it's about what happens if you are kind of starved for affection. And then also in the background, in this village, all these weird things are starting to happen. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. It is a bit odd. The writing style won't be for everybody. So you can also probably hear my washing machine. It's Sunday. Um, but I enjoyed it. I gave it a solid four stars. So yeah, thank you for lending that to me, Ben. I'm glad I got to read it. So those are the books I finished. And then... This dropped through my letterbox this week and I'd completely forgotten that I'd pre-ordered it. So this is Richard Richard Osman's The Bullet That Missed. This is part of the Thursday Night... Thursday Murder Club? Not Thursday Night Club, <laughs> Thursday Murder Club. Uh, my lovely mother-in-law always buys the hardbacks of these books and is very kind enough to lend them to me. So I've already read this. I read this a few months ago, but I've been collecting the paperbacks because I just really like the way they look. Um, so this arrived, which was a little treat to myself. So that'll go straight onto my shelves. Um, yeah, I will definitely reread these at some point, although I might reread them on audio, possibly, because we all know that I crack spines and this is very pretty. I just really like the colour scheme for this one, this green one. And we've got a fourth one coming, I think, later in the year, which I think is purple, which will be exciting, because so far, you can see the others here, we've had red and blue. So yeah, that is what the the book that dropped in through the letterbox. And we do this quick, because there's or it's already like eight minutes into a clip. Although I feel like I'm enjoying my reading this month. I don't feel like I've really got my reading pace up yet so we'll see because i'm now on five books finished for the month which is okay 
um yeah but some lovely human and i'm really sorry i can't remember who it was that that asked me asked for a flip through of what they called my reading journal because they've obviously seen that i use this at the end of each wrap up vlog and i would never call this a reading journal it's not fancy enough for that it's just my kind of reading notebook but i'm happy to show you guys i don't think it's particularly interesting um so let's i'll show you april as an example so in the front for each month i have uh is this called a spread? I don't even know what the words are. I feel like you should watch people like Chloe. Chloe does like proper flip throughs through her reading journal. So does cars and cats and cameras. Um, but what I do is very basic. So I just have the stickers at the top with the uh, month because I cannot draw as my kids at school will tell you, I cannot draw. And when I tried, let's just show you like January of 2022. Like this was when I was trying to do the dates myself. Oh, that's June. So I now have stickers, which I just bought on Amazon. Um, this page is, as I'm reading, like every time I finish a book, I put it in here. So I have the title of the book, the number of pages, and then the star rating I've given it. And then at the end of each month, I do a written wrap up. And this is what I'm just reading out to you at the end of each vlog. Uh, so number of books read, number of pages read, and then I split that into two pages per day. Average star rating, my favourite read, my most disappointing, my TBR, my sub count, which you guys probably don't need to be worrying about. Um, any DNFs I put in here as well. And then I balance the books here. So that's got my like tracker on it of how many books have come in and how many have read. And then in the back is my written list for my TBR. As you can see, these are the pages where I finish the books. This is from August 2021, which is when I started doing this. And then anything in green, I've read. Anything in purple, I've started and DNF'd. And then anything in pink, I've unhauled, unread. Um, so that I can keep up with. And then also <laughs> the months in blue is where I've read all the books that I hauled that month. So for example, right now, the oldest book on my TBI is from June 2022, which is The Dictionary of Lost Words and Hidden Valley Road. So they're two books that are on my priority stack over there. Um, for this month and then I can just as I go through I just highlight them um, as they come off my TBR one way or the other so yeah that is it and this is just a really simple I think again I think I got this off Amazon it doesn't have like a does it have like a tell me which company it's from it just says my book journal I always think I was being fancy when I wrote down book journal um, but no I don't think it says even like a, a make but it's just this really beautiful soft blue leather and it does the job. It's nothing fancy, but it does the job. It's the 21st of May, so it's exactly a week since I last spoke to you guys. And we're back on the floor next to my bed. <laughs> we literally sat in the bay window in our bedroom. Um, and I'm exhausted and I burnt my face yesterday in the sun, which I don't think is showing up massively on camera. But trust me, it is sore <laughs> and I'm an idiot. Do not follow my example. Uh, so we've done the first week of exams and it was exactly as chaotic as I thought it would be. Uh, it's been exhausting, you can hear my voice. It's Sunday, I've had two days of rest and I still sound really husky. And next week is gonna be even more intense because next week is when I get re-roomed. Uh, so yes, I'm trying to hold on to the fact that I managed last week. I was in the right place at the right time. I set the right work for the right kids. I ran the right lessons. I ran the right revision sessions. I managed, I didn't cry not in front of the kids anyway, um, and we survived. So this week coming is going to be the same. 
um, except, like I said, I'm, I'm being re-roomed on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not even sure which day is. I think it's Wednesday. Uh, and also on Thursday and Friday, I am the English department because <laughs> I've got one colleague signed off sick. One doesn't work Friday, so she'll be in Thursday. Um, and then our half, our head of department, is on training Thursday and Friday to, uh, for examiner training. So Friday, I am the English department. So that's fun. Um, and it's also the end of term, so the kids will be entirely feral by the time we get to Friday afternoon. So yes, I am not as anxious as I was last week. I'm kind of just resigned to the chaos that's about to happen. And I'm exhausted before we even start. So there we go. Um, it's been a nice weekend. I marked yesterday because of everything that's going on with the timetable. There is literally no time to plan or mark anything. So I did planning marking yesterday from like eight till two I think so that wasn't too bad um and whilst I was doing that the boys were building our new garden furniture which I think could have put in the b-roll they also put the hammock together for me so I then spent a lovely few hours in the hammock hence the sunburn I do this every year I lay in the sun for like three or four hours and it doesn't occur to me that I need sunscreen like I said I'm an idiot do not follow my example um but I had a lovely time in the hammock turns out that savannah who is just up here sleeping loves the hammock so we had some very nice colors in the hammock jack and molly will not come in the hammock they do not enjoy the swaying motion of it but she was very much i um, happy to come for cuddles so that was nice um and i have finished two books and i had a book arrive that i should have opened on camera i was too impatient so i opened it and i'll tell you about that in a minute and i've got a parcel from the lovely lovely marianne at copper books who is just a wonderful human and I know it's her because it says it on the return label and all I've done is open the box and taken my um address off it and then I'll, I'm gonna like open it properly on camera so I'm very excited about that I've also got two random things to show you that I bought shit purely because of I was stressed so I just ordered stuff <laughs> because apparently that's what I'm doing at the moment so let's talk books first the first book that I finished uh, you saw me haul this month this is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley um, this is the first in a series and I got about 50 pages in and pre-ordered the second one I really enjoyed this this was as close to getting a five star as it can get without getting a five star if that makes sense I gave it 4.5 I don't do quarter stars yet although I feel like that might be coming next year with the amount of 4.5 stars I've given out this year so far I adored this so we are following Mariel that's it who is a witch uh she's very powerful but she is very kind of haphazard and has a lot of accidents with her magic and one day she is trying to summon I think she's trying to summon a, summon, summon a skillet or ingredients for pancakes or something she's making pancakes or something she tries to summon something and she accidentally summons Oz who is a demon and he is a soul bargainer I think um, and because she summoned to him, he has to stay until she agrees a bargain for her soul, because that is what he does. Um, and it's about what happens and it goes from there. And I just adored this. This has got fake dating, um, false proximity, sunshine and versus grumpy. Uh, Oz is this, also a cinnamon roll. There was a whole load of like representation, but done in a magical way because she lives in, I can't remember what the name of the town is. It's really cute. Um, it's sort of like Gilmore Girls, but with witches, warlocks, demons, fairies, centaurs, um, sirens, like there's all kinds of stuff going on. Um, but it's got that like cozy Gilmore Girls vibe. Um, and it's about their love story and it's got very naughty bits in it it's kind of uh for me on the same level as um in terms of the sex scenes it's kind of very talia hibbert brown sisters uh the roommate by rosie dannon that kind of it's you know it's got a cute cover but there is definitely naughty bits inside um like i said it's got a whole load of rep um mariel it's not ever described as adhd but she has some very adhd typically adhd like characteristics and for example her friends all, all shout squirrel every time she goes off on a tangent um in a conversation and i loved their relationship their their like chemistry and the way they learn each other in terms of like love language and the support that they want i adored that mariel also has a really difficult relationship with her mother and i loved how that was handled you don't see the way it plays out in this book very often and i really enjoyed that i think the only thing for me was 
the way the third act conflict kicks off really annoyed me um, because it was one of those classic like just communicate and I don't enjoy a miscommunication trope as you guys know and so yeah that was the only thing for me like the way that played out felt really juvenile and they'd up to that point they'd been adults communicating and it was suddenly like why why are we what why is this happening just talk to each other um but I did love this and like I said I've already pre-ordered the sequel so I would highly recommend and yeah another just beautiful beautiful cover so you can hear noises next door um it's a busy day in our household so there was that one and then I picked up a book on audio because it's a book that I wanted to read for ages and I'd been avoiding because I knew it was going to have an impact on me and it was going to make me think about some stuff that I've been thinking about for a while um and then I saw Mel from a book fiend named Mel, named Mel did a read of all of Alice Oseman's novels and this was Alice's debut I think they wrote it when they were 16 um and it is about Georgia who loves love she loves romance she loves Shakespeare she loves um kind of chick lick films or you know rom-com films and she's 18 and she's going to university and she's never kissed anyone uh, she's never had a crush on anyone she's never found somebody she wants to kiss but she really wants to go to university and have that kind of sweeping love story where you meet the love of your life um during freshers week uh, and so she goes to university with her two best mates and it goes from there and this is very much about her exploring and understanding her sexuality it is about the kind of different ways of loving people and being in love what that means it's about friendship it's about found family i loved the like the people around her her best friend pip who she's known since they were at secondary school together um is a lesbian and they've also got another friend jason i think it is um who is their kind of who's also been a friend of theirs for years sort of sort of later on like from sixth form college onwards and then when she moves to university she has a roommate called rooney and rooney again has a different kind of sexuality and a different outlook on love and relationships and sex and i just love how this all wove together um this has asexual rap in it as you can probably guess from the title i feel like that isn't giving a spoiler um and as somebody who is demisexual but didn't kind of understand that until i was in my 30s i loved how this was dealt with and i loved how alice oseman approached this and this made me laugh out loud in places because so much of it is just such a universal story that you know going to university for the first time and working out how you're going to fend for yourself and how you're going to look after yourself and who you are as a human and how you're going to function and some of the conversations she has with rooney in particular when they're getting to know each other were just making me absolutely crack up and it's kind of almost made me feel nostalgic for my own university days um and also i loved just georgia coming to understand herself and i feel like if this had been around when i was 16 my life would have been a lot different and a lot it would have been a lot better for it so yeah this made me laugh it did make me cry it really made me think um and as you can see i bought myself a physical copy because i adored it so yeah that was a five out of five for me it's also got loads of shakespeare references i'm a massive shakespeare nerd and to be honest the audiobook started and it starts with a quote from midsummer night's dream uh sorry not midsummer night's dream much do about nothing which is my favorite shakespeare play which is if if it proves so then loving goes by haps some cupid kills with arrows some with traps which is much do and as soon as i heard that cry i was like well this is a book for me so yes i adored that five out of five stars and thank you to mel for talking about it because it was definitely seeing her review it that prompted me to pick it up uh so yeah i really enjoyed that and it's unscribed the narrator did a fab job as well especially with all different voices for the characters okay then i had a book delivery yesterday from book break and i should have opened it on camera i didn't because i was too impatient i didn't feel like filming at the time um and i was like it might be that but it probably isn't because there's a few books that i know i'll be lucky enough to be sent um by book break over the next few weeks because there are like it's thriller season basically um for the arcs because obviously they'll come out in the summer so they start getting sent out now i was like it's probably just one of those so i opened it and then i screamed <laughs> i dropped the parcel and my husband and son came running because they thought i'd been stung by a bee um and that's because i'd opened 
this and I still cannot believe I'm holding this in my hands. This is Bone, Sh Bone Shops and Book Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to, uh, oh my gosh, what is it? <laughs> Legends and Lattes. I can't believe I forgot that. My brain was going coffee shops and something. No, Legends and Lattes, my, arguably my favourite book of last year. This comes out in November. And like I said, this is a prequel. This is set 20 years before. We're, we're still with Viv. Um, I haven't even really read the back because I don't really want to know. Um, this comes out in November. So normally, 9th of November this comes out. Normally I would be reading this in October. But there is absolutely no way in hell I'm not reading that reading this this month. Like, absolutely not. I've got my two current reads and one more after that that I need to read this month for various reasons. And then I am picking this up for sure. I'm also obsessed with this cover art. I mean, this is just the arc. I mean... I'm so excited. I'm, I cannot believe I'm holding this in my hands. I mean, it's always an absolute privilege to receive ARC copies of books and be able to read them early and to kind of help build hype and all of that stuff. It's an absolute privilege and one that I will never take for granted. It's always excited to be able to send a book. But when you have your most anticipated release of the year in your hands, like what, like six months before it's due out, that's unreal. So massive thank you to Book Break for this. And like I said, I, I literally screeched and then dropped the parcel. But thankfully I did not then the book. Was, we're okay, we're okay. So yeah, I will definitely be reading this way too early and reviewing it because I can't help myself. And uh, I'm so excited to be back with Viv. I'm so excited. Okay, then I'll show you a couple of little things that I bought just because I was clearly buying serotonin this week. It was definitely one of those things where parcels arrived and I was like, I literally don't even remember ordering these things and then checking the app and I was like oh yeah I did do that so even though I'm not allowed to have nail varnish at school during the school term for some reason I bought nail varnish and I gone for this really cute peachy colour uh this is the air by Barry M breathable nail paint so that'll have to be for half term because I can't have my nails painted during the school term and then you can clearly see where my brain's been at because I bought a pop socket uh and it says if I get my head out of the way school's out for summer <laughs> So we're clearly on countdown. Uh, so yeah, I bought myself that. And then let's open this parcel. Let's just make sure I haven't got Marianne's parcel over here. Okay, so she sent me this. And it says this way off on it. And I have no idea what's in it. I've just cut the top open and taken my dress off. Oh, she's so cute. Look at this, look. So if you don't know Marianne a couple of books, she's amazing. She's just one of the kindest people I know she also works in a school so she knows what it's like and she just she's just absolutely lovely I love these cards I've got a few of these on my classroom door from her so these are the bookishly um postcards and it says whilst on their honeymoon Victor Hugo gave his bride a neat little parcel from which as she eagerly opened it a great bat flew up at her that was the poet's way of offering her his charming verses La Chavre Sores I don't know I mean probably would have got a divorce right then and there and then on the back she said sending you a little exam season survival kit love marianne she's so cute okay i've already messaged her say so thank you instantly and to let her know it arrived but also that i would open it on camera oh, this is pretty i'm able to keep all of this right oh my gosh there's loads in it <gasps> so we're starting off with some cherry candy canes i don't think i i feel like i have never tried the cherry one so that's very exciting oh she sent me more teasers those are gonna go straight in my school bag as marking snacks Oh my god, there's loads in here. What are you doing, woman? Whoa, okay. She sent me a probiotic sheet mask. God, this is really squishy. Uh, with caramel extract for balances skin and pr promotes a healthy skin microbiome. Okay, this is cool. I'm going to do this probably next weekend once my sunburn has gone down. Because I don't really want to mess around with my skin at the moment. But that is so cute. And then, oh my gosh, we're, we're still going. Okay. I'm gonna the cats will be very excited for all of this so thank you for that um oh it smells so good and then she sent me oh a yankee candle in this cute little she's so adorable um thing so this is the last paradise nice this is oh that smells so good especially for this time of year there's that one and then because she hasn't done enough clearly she also sent me and this is slightly Come undone in the box. But she sent me Radox, which muscle soak. This is an absolute need. If you have any teachers or anyone that works in a school in your life right now, they need to be able to soak their muscles of an evening because we are running around like literal lunatics. So yeah, thank you so much. Wow, Marianne. So we've got 
Hang on, let's try and hold this all up together. We've got a sheet mask, candy kittens, the redox, the, I can't even hold it in, all in one hand, the candle, more teasers, and there's my postcard. Ooh, sounds breaking up now. Oops, I've just dropped the more teasers, but that's all right, I'm gonna eat them in a minute. All of these things. Wow, thank you so much, Marianne. That has absolutely made my day. It's the 27th of May and it's half term. Yay! <laughs> you can hear the state of my voice. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. This last week has been so hard. So hard. I have worked a lot of hours this week. I think I clocked in at like 61 hours or something on the app that I use to track my habits. And yeah, it's been a really busy week. I've done a lot of cover. I've done year 11 revision. I've negotiated or navigated the end of term craziness and all of the assessments that we have to do. Uh, I was the only member of the English department yesterday. Here comes Sav, she's gonna probably push the camera over. Hello. <laughs> there she is, she's like, what are you doing? Don't knock over my pile of stuff. Um, I apologize if you, yeah, we don't, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um it's just it's just it's been a lot it's been a lot and so is the first day of the holidays and i jolted awake at 5 15 so that's really fun um because clearly my brain has not caught up with the fact that we are pausing the stress for the next seven days or nine days technically um before i go back to work a week on monday so yeah i've been awake quite a long time it's 9 a.m now gary's up um and I thought I'd come and chat to you. I've got one book that I finished, which you can see on top here. Then I've got some bookish stuff to talk about. I've got two parcels to open. And then I want to show you the pre-order of a book that I ordered, which is just stunning. Like, even nicer in person than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I just, yeah, I thought I'd do a little catch up. I'm in a bit of a weird space of my reading. Um, I'm reading The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule on audiobook. And I'm enjoying that. It is long, though, and it's a little bit dense in places. But... Um, I'm almost halfway through, I think, so I won't finish it before the end of the month, but I am reading that and enjoying it, kind of. Um, it's true crime about Ted Bundy, so I don't know if you can really enjoy it. I'm appreciating the writing. It was one that Amelia mentioned uh, from Amelia Barlow Books in a video recently. I think it was one, the one where she was recommending books to other booktubers, and she recommended it to somebody else. I think she recommended it to Chloe, and I was like, well, that sounds interesting, so I'm going to read that as well. So yeah, it is interesting. I'm also reading The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams, I think. Uh, I will finish that before the end of the month, so I'll talk about that when I'm wrapping it up. I am enjoying it, it's very gentle. I'm not feeling the pull to pick it up though. Um, and technically I've also started Hidden Valley Road, I can't remember the name of that author. But again, I'm planning to finish that before the end of the month because that one and Dictionary of Lost Words are the two oldest. Oh, thanks, Sav. <laughs> That's really helpful. Um are the two oldest books on my TBR and they turn a year old next month and one of my intentions for the year was to make sure there were no books older than a year on my TBR so I need to finish those before the end of May. Then I'm desperate to pick up Bookshops and Bone Dust and I'm also desperate to pick up one of the books in this stack. So that's where I am with my reading. I haven't really been reading this week aside from the audiobook. I've read basically nothing because I just have not had the energy or the headspace for it uh, but we've now got a few more days of the month left and I'm on holiday for all day so hopefully my reading will pick up. So the book that the only book that I finished oh which I've just knocked the table sorry is technically a play. This is A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansbury. I picked this up because we are going to be teaching this to year nine next term. So obviously I needed to pre-read it uh, before I teach it um, and I enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. So Lorraine Hansbury uh, was a black American playwright and this is about a um, working class black family in Harlem, I think. Yeah, Chicago, sorry, Chicago, Chicago Southside. Um, it links to the poem Harlem by 
Langston Hughes, which we've just talked to you now, so that's one of the links. Um, and basically this family, the father has died and they are waiting for his insurance check to come through, which is going to be $10,000. And they've all got different ideas and different dreams of what they want to do with it. And it's basically about what they end up doing with the money. I really liked this. Like I said, I gave it four stars. It's sad in places, it's funny in places, it's interesting. It's got loads of like, really interesting themes. I am really excited to teach this to you nine. I feel like it's one where my rating might change. I feel like my rating might improve once I've taught it um, and kind of had a bit more time to study it in depth and talk to the cat, like chat to the kids about it. We're also going to watch the film version. So yeah, I'm excited to teach this next month. And that was a four star. And it was obviously a nice quick read as well. It was kind of helpful for my reading brain this month uh, to get that read. So I finished that one. Then I also had, oh, I put this in here. I think I was meant to put that up. But anyway, my lovely mum, <laughs> I think I put it in B-roll, uh, sent me some of my favourite body lotion, which is very, very expensive. Um, and she just sent it as a little treat this week because she wouldn't, she knew it was a hard week. Uh, so that was very nice. And then um, my friend, our friend Maisie, and also my brother's, brother-in-law's girlfriend. So sort of like, like sister-in-law is like shorthand. Um, Maisie, it's her birthday next weekend and she's very bookish so I was like I will pick Maisie's birthday presents and by the time this goes up she'll have had it yeah we'll be doing her birthday stuff on the day that you, if you guys watch this when it goes up that will be the day we're doing our family gathering for her so I'll show you this stuff I don't think she watches my channel anyway um but I also just thought I'd show you because they it, like both things came really cutely wrapped so I picked a card for her um and this is from the Etsy store uh Taurus Little Bubble which is very cute and it all came nicely packaged and then I just saw this and I was like that's it's got to be that because it says um it's your birthday treat yourself and I just love the illustration it's really cute I kind of want to get one for myself and keep it as a print so I got that for her and then from tea and fairy tales and I just thought I'd mention these because they came really quickly and both things like the card really high quality and so is the gift so that was really cute um I, yeah I ordered her this book sleeve it's humongous it is definitely big enough for a hardback and it says so many books so little time and then it's got her name on it yeah and I thought that was really cute and it's really well padded like it would definitely protect your books so I was really impressed with that so I thought I'd mention it and show you because also it's bookish um and then a couple of days ago let's pick this up so you don't see my dress this arrived and I wanted to open it on camera it did not feel like filming was not capable of filming I could barely string a sentence together by the time I got home from work quite honestly so I thought we'd open it together this morning apparently with Sav who's having a morning bath Oh, off in one so whoever this is thank you so much like i say i hopefully say it every time like you do not I, there is no expectation that people send me stuff at, like genuinely at all but it does make my day <laughs> it does happen okay let's see if we can find a gift note first that's the order i prefer to do it in yes there's the gift note okay oh it's from laura she's <laughs> Something to break to enjoy either in the half term exam break or after year eleven leave. We are nearly there from Laura. She's also an English teacher. She's also works uh in the same age. She's also a secondary teacher. I see I told you I can't string a sentence together. So she knows exactly what I've been going through this week. Um oh, she's so lovely. What is she what did she pick? She's got great taste in books. Uh what does she get? Oh yes! Excellent. Keep it in the family by John Mars. I feel like this is exactly the kind of easy thing my brain needs at the moment. Um, John Mars wrote The One, which I loved. I've loved some, I've hated one, and I've had a few like middling experiences. So I'm excited to see what, where we go with this. Um, something about a young couple buy, buy a house and then the wife gets pregnant or the girl gets pregnant and then they find, yeah, so Mia finds, discovers a shocking message scored into a skirting board. I will save them from the attic. Following the clue up into the eaves, the couple make a gruesome discovery. Their home was once a real life murder house with the evidence still concealed within the four walls. So I'm not going any further than that. That sounds so good. Chloe mentioned it a while ago and I was like, yes, that sounds awesome. So thank you so much, Laura. I will definitely be picking that up soon because I'm very intrigued by that. Okay, let's put that over there. And then yesterday my parcel arrived uh, from the little bookish company from Lauren. Um, we didn't get a candle in April. Yeah, I think it was April. Um, she had to pause everything because she's not been very well, unfortunately. Bless her. So this is May's candle. And I can already tell you this parcel smells so good. So let's, ooh, again, let's put it down here so you, you know, address internet safety, all of that stuff. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, there's two things. 
she did say we were getting an extra gift this month so this is what it looks like oh, it smells so good um and yeah we i am the candle tier so the candle i was expecting but what i was not expecting was this oh so this is one of her wax melts you just like i usually just cut them into quarters uh so green gables fig pie honey and kindred spirits i mean is that not the cutest thing you never heard oh that smells oh that honey smell is delicious glitter in there how exciting and then let's see what the actual candle is because I'm very excited about this Ooh. right okay purple i don't think we've had purple yet as a color and i have no clue what this is sorry also the lighting's just changed and it's not great i do apologize but i also i can't be bothered to move and reset okay oh oh i also get the lids are going to be loose okay april showers oh okay hang on let's get this box out of the way lavender marshmallow and dreamy days this sounds perfect for what i planned for our term oh that is nice sweet and also like a little bit musky and again it's just the glitter oh so cute oh that's so nice okay that's going to be perfect for keeping me company whilst i mark and then the last thing i need to show you is this book that i pre-ordered from waterstones you just seen the edge of it look at this i hardly ever pre-order books um this is uh rebecca rebecca f kwong so rf kwong who wrote babel um and that i was completely obsessed with last month and so i was part way through babel and i was like i'm clearly gonna need to order whatever she's writing next so i've ordered this i don't even really know that much about it i know it's about the publishing industry and racism and it's a satire and she wrote it so i was like yes please and the option on the waterstones website was to either get a signed edition or an edition with sprayed edges and i mean like look at those i just i'm fully obsessed i love the black I love this. Sorry if you can hear background noise, guys, washing up downstairs. It's so pretty. Like, I barely even want to touch it. I'm slightly scared to actually read this copy, but I'm going to. Um, and then let, let me show you the naked hardback because that is also just gorgeous. Look at this. I love the black on black on embossing. You've also got bright yellow end pages. I love this with a little typewriter. I'm just, I'm fully obsessed by the whole thing. So yeah, I am very excited to read this. It's currently a tie in my head between which book I'm most excited about, Bone uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust, or this one. I f and I, I genuinely, I've got a poll running right this second on Instagram to tell me what to read first because I genuinely can't decide. So yeah, absolutely beautiful. So that catches you up on bookish stuff over the last few days. Today we are taking, Gary and I are taking Grandma to the Pig one of our favourite places with one of our favourite people. We've been wanting to take her there for ages. And I think I mentioned this in the last clip, but Gary got a bonus for work, which was very lovely. Um, and so we're going to spend some of it, a good chunk of it, <laughs> this afternoon at the pig. Uh, so yeah, I need to go and tidy all of this up, make myself a way more presentable than I currently am. And then we're going to go and have a lovely, a uh, lovely, afternoon what a words i was trying to be smooth with my like end of the clip but it's clearly not worked we're gonna go and have a lovely afternoon in the sunshine have some fantastic food and just have a lovely lovely start to our holiday
It's the 29th of May and Gary just left to go and pick Charlie up and take him to Devon for the next few days and I'm I felt a bit tearful as he drove away which I realise is pathetic because he's going to be gone for like two whole days really because uh, they're back Thursday it's Monday now so we've got today then Tuesday Wednesday uh, which are the two whole days obviously and then they're back Thursday evening so it's yeah I'm being ridiculous but it's also just a bit of a weird one because I haven't been alone in this house for that long since before the pandemic sorry Sab's padding around and it just feels a bit weird so yeah however we've had a wonderful weekend which you've seen from the b-roll grandma loved the pig we had a fantastic meal as always it was really special to take her there and show her where we were um you know where i was the morning of the wedding and where we stayed the night of the wedding and all of that stuff it was just really nice and she seemed to enjoy it which was good um it felt like real like quality time with her and then yesterday we took the bike out for the first ride of the year I need to work out a way of like filming a bit when we're, when we're on bike rides. I need to borrow Charlie's GoPro or something because it's just so beautiful. I love being on the back of the bike. Um, you have the best view, I think, of the countryside and it was just stunning yesterday. We had the nicest ride. We obviously went and got brunch because what else are we going to do? Um, and then we had a very chill afternoon. Gary watched the F1, I read, uh, I napped, I fell asleep on the sofa. That never happens. Um, and I was supposed to cook a curry for dinner and then I didn't. <laughs> we ordered dinner in instead, which was a bit naughty. But there we go. Um, and so today uh, is my 12-hour live show. So by the time you see this, that will obviously have happened. I'm excited. I'm really nervous. I've never tried anything of this level before. Um, and I have like six or seven people coming to be on the live show. So I've got to manage that. And I've got a rough plan for the day, but it will probably all go out the window really quickly. So yeah, I think um, I think it will be fun, and I am looking forward to it. And if you you came to that live show, dropped in, spent a little bit of time with me, spent loads of time with me, thank you so much in advance for being there. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I'm just about to basically make myself some breakfast, give the house a bit of a tidy, get set up for the day because it's now half past eight, um, and the live show starts at ten. And I want to get as much like set up as I can so that I'm not doing it, not worrying about it whilst I'm on the live. Um, and then we're going to start at 10. So yeah, I have finished a book, finally, and I've got a parcel that arrived, so I thought we'd open that together. Uh, so the book that I finished was The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. This was a very kind gift from the lovely Mel at a book fiend named Mel last year. I think I won a giveaway. I want to say it was like a 500 subscriber giveaway or something. Anyway, she sent this to me in June. Um, and this was one of her favourite books of that year or the previous year. I can't remember. It's one of her favourite books. Anyway, it was definitely on like her favourite reads list. Uh, and we are following Esme. I'm really bad at at names. Um, and we start in the just before World War One. I, I feel like is there a date? Yeah, we start in 1886, um, and we finish in the kind of interwar years. Um, and this is about Esme, whose father is involved with the creation of the dictionary, um, and she grows up in the room, the scriptorium, they call it. Uh, where the words are being decided and debated and meanings being debated and it's her job to basically her father like puts her under the table so she's out of the way and she starts collecting words that get discarded um, and we follow her all the way through her life and into adulthood um, and I really enjoyed this I gave it four stars I can see why Mel liked it it's got lots of really interesting themes so there's a lot in here about feminism the suffragette movement is happening kind of around her it's about <laughs> it's jack now doing zoomies it is about um privilege and it's about language and words um i only gave it four stars because i felt emotionally distant from it it didn't give me the kind of emotional reaction that it, i think it should have done and i'm not sure if this is a debut i don't know if it says does it say if this is a debut no um I'm not sure actually if it is or not. Uh, but I mean, there aren't any other books like listed in the introductory bit. So maybe it is. Um, but it just felt slightly disconnected for me. There are some huge things that happened to Esme in her life. Big emotional things. And I think there was too much telling rather than showing. And like jumps forward in time when actually I wanted to stay where we were and get a little bit more detail and a little bit, bit more emotion from it. So yeah, I enjoyed this. It's very slow just so be aware of that which is also not my favorite thing so maybe it was partly that as well but I just felt slightly emotionally disconnected from it I thought like reflecting on all the things that happened to her 
like I should have cried <laughs> or felt emotional and I didn't. It just slightly missed that for me. But I still really enjoyed it. If you're looking for historical fiction uh, that is feminist and about language, then I would recommend this. There is some very strong language in this. Uh, one of the words that she collects is the C word. Uh, so just be aware of that, picking it up. Um, and there are also themes of grief and uh i don't want to give spoilers there's kind of grief in all its forms is in this let's put it that way and the different way, ways that you can grieve people there is also talk of world war one in the trenches and the injuries that the men suffered um and all of that kind of stuff so yeah i enjoyed this gave it four stars thank you very much mel i'm glad i read it uh yeah it was it was a good kind of slow book for when my brain was tired basically so yeah i enjoyed that thank you okay and then this arrived yesterday and it is from my wish list so let's open this so once again i've already said it what at least once in this video because i've been spoiled already in this video you guys do not have to do this at all however it is very exciting when it does happen the um my address is on this side so i'm obviously gonna keep that off the internet got it off in one right oh is that the gift note no that's the receipt I always like to try and find the gift notes, but oh, gift notes right at the top. That's very handy. Oh, it's from Jo and Alfie. She said, hope you enjoy half term. Hopefully the weather will stay as nice, as nice so you can spend time relaxing. Lots of love from Jo and Alfie. Thank you so much, Jo and Alfie. That's very kind of you. What have you sent me? Jo's got really good taste in books, so let's see what this is. Oh, yes. Lying in wait, Liz Nugent. I read another Liz Nugent last month and really enjoyed it. The, the, the latest one, the name of which has completely left my head. Um, and it says in the front, my husband did not mean to kill her. Is this the one that Aoife is always talking about and can quote the first line? Let's just check, because I feel like it was. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is the first line. My husband did not mean to kill Annie Doyle, but the lying tramp deserved it. <laughs> okay. I'm maybe going to read the back. I'm very excited for this. Well done, Joe. That is a fantastic choice. I'm going to put that on my shelf. And at some point when I need a really quick, clever thriller Liz Nugent is the author that I will turn to so thank you so much for that though that was really lovely of you now I need to go and get myself ready to be live on the internet for 12 full hours It's the 31st of May and I don't know if it's just because this is the last half term before our final term of the year and I'm just really tired or it's because the boys are away or what. But I feel really out of sorts this week, like I'm just not clicking into holiday mode at all, which is a bit of a problem because today is Wednesday and we go back to work on Monday. Um, so yeah, I've just been in a little bit of a weird headspace. I really thoroughly enjoyed myself on the 12 hour live show. I was exhausted by the end of it. Thank you so much to those of you who came um, and hung out with me and chatted with me. And obviously the ladies that were on screen with me, like they were just the best and they really kept me going. Um, so I really enjoyed that. But yeah, I've just been in a bit of a weird headspace. Um, yesterday when I got my hair cut and the colour refreshed, which you can't really tell, which I think is always a good sign of a good haircut. Um, or hair, good hair colour if you can't really tell but she basically just did my roots and got rid of a few greys that had poked her little heads up um, and then kind of cut it back into shape so that's feeling much better she also took a lot of the weight out of it which I really needed this time of year because my hair is super thick um, so that was nice and then I was supposed to come home and mark and do a bit of housework and stuff and I fell asleep on the sofa <laughs> instead so yeah, yesterday was a bit of a weird one. I watched um, Chloe's uh, sprints that she did for the dystopian readathon. I really enjoyed those, so I'll link those in the description. Um, but yeah, it's just I'm just in a bit of a weird headspace. Uh, but today I'm going into <coughs> Bristol, and you guys are controlling my whole day today. Uh, that vlog will be up after this one, so it'll be coming shortly. Um, and I'm really, I am looking forward to today. It feels, it feels like I'm kind of gamifying my day out. Um, but so far, you guys have chosen 
chocolate spread on toast for me and my outfit which is my dungarees with my t-shirt um the weather's turned it's gone really gray and i feel like it might get rained on today but we'll see uh but yeah other things that will be chosen for me i haven't looked at the results at all um because i'm only looking as i need the next instruction um but you guys are also deciding what i listen to in the car how many books i buy which bubble tea flavors i get what i get for lunch if i go to the cinema or come home to watch a film and um, what i'm going to do this evening uh all of that stuff it's really fun I'm, i am really enjoying it already and we've only just started uh yeah so that's today um and then the boys are back tomorrow so tomorrow i really need to mark because i haven't started yet uh but that will obviously be in june's wrap up because tomorrow is the first of june which is just crazy um i have come in because i feel like i might finish one more book after this possibly i haven't decided yet um but i have finished a book since i switched you last and that's yellow face by rebecca f kwang um i've tabbed this you can see a little bit there um i loved this i read this mostly on the 12 hour sprints and i feel like if i hadn't been sprinting and chatting with like the other people that were there i would have finished this in one go as it was i've read about 95 percent of it on monday and then i finished it yesterday morning i thoroughly enjoyed this like the hype for this book is real um i gave it 4.5 not five which might be slightly controversial because nearly everyone that i've seen review it so far has given it a five star i loved it up until the last like 20 pages i felt like the ending was just slightly weak um but otherwise i thought this was brilliant so we're following oh my goodness is it june yeah we're following june who is a white author and she is friends with Athena who is a Chinese author and Athena's career has completely gone you know she's completely massive and she's on all the bestseller lists and she's winning prizes and all this stuff to, and all this kind of stuff and June and Athena went to college together at Southern America set, went to like university slash college together um, and June's debut novel no, it didn't do anywhere near as well and she's kind of struggling to write her second book she goes for a night out with Athena Athena invites her back invites June back to her apartment um, and there's a freak accident and Athena dies we know this from the blurb um, she dies in front of June and June steals Athena's latest manuscript and then publishes it as her own um, and it's the manuscript that Athena had been writing was about the experience of um, Chinese soldiers in World War Two. Um, and that book goes on to be huge. But there's this whole conversation around if June as a white author has the right to tell that story. So you've got quite a few things going on. You've got obviously the fact that she's stolen the manuscript in the first place. You've got the fact that she uh, has stolen manuscript from um, an author of colour. And also that question of whether white authors can and should tell stories outside of their own um, experiences um, and then things start to happen on social media and there's this kind of slightly thriller-esque element i've seen a few people rec um, kind of just uh, describe this as a thriller i wouldn't say that it is i would say it's kind of a contemporary lit fic with a little bit of thriller thrown in there a bit like um babel isn't purely dark academia and it's also not purely fantasy i feel like rf kwang or rebecca f kwang as she's published this book under really plays around with genre and that's one of the things that i love so yeah this was very uncomfortable it's very confronting it's very satirical um as somebody who obviously spends a lot of their time talking about books on the internet it was a very interesting look at that it definitely looks at kind of twitter pylons and cancel culture and how um that can affect people uh, it also looks at how books are published. I found that whole section where she's having this book published really fascinating and looking at the process. Um, and then you see kind of how it all unravels. And like I said, I didn't love the very end. I felt like it slightly lost its direction. Sorry, I've got windows open because it's I'm really warm after <laughs> my shower and blow drying my hair. So you can probably hear the wind in the background. Um, yeah, I felt it slightly lost steam a tiny bit in the last like 20 pages, but it was fantastic. Um, I feel like any other month, this might have been my read of the month. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend this one. The hype is real. Although, annoyingly, this cover is like the kind that really shows the fingerprints. See that there? It's just my fingerprints. So I need to clean that off. But yeah, I loved it. I'm obsessed with this, this version. It's even prettier in person than it's showing up on camera. So yes, that is a book that I have finished. I might finish one more book today. I'm currently reading one that I'm pretty sure is going to be five stars. You probably know what that book is. But that might roll over into june it depends how the rest of my day goes so i will be back in a few seconds for you uh to finish off this vlog um but for now right now in real life in real time um i'm gonna go and let the internet control my whole day
and as it turned out, those were all the books I read in the month of May. So it's now the 1st of June, I'm coming in to wrap up the wrap up. I haven't finished any other reads, I didn't get around to uh, doing much reading yesterday. The vlog where you guys control my day will be up in two weeks from today, so you will see um, everything I got up to then. I will have put in a little bit of b-roll um, between the two clips on this video, I think, uh, but I didn't read, but boy did I buy books. I'm not even sorry. I'm going to actually wait. Um, I'm not going to show you those books in this video because I want you guys to kind of see that at the end of that vlog. But there are nine books in that stack and I am not at all repentant. <laughs> so yeah, May has been a tough month. There is no getting around it. Half term is obviously lovely at the end of it. Um, at the time of filming this, we've got a couple more days left. It's Thursday. So we've got a couple more days left. I've got so much to do today, but that is for July's vlog. J July? June's vlog. Um, so thank you for sticking around if you got to this point, because I know I've been doing a lot of whinging about being tired and stressed. So thank you for being here and along for the ride. Thank you so much if you came to the live show and, you know, just for your usual loveliness. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm filming today. I'm, it's my first lot of filming in like six weeks. So it feels a bit weird being sat here. So if you've seen my kiss quotient read along announcement, I'm sorry if that was really garbled. I was weirdly super nervous filming it. Um, it is what it is. I'm very excited about that read along though. So let's talk stats. So I read 10 books in the month of May, which was not bad. It's a pretty good kind of average amount. I've now got hiccups. I read 3,334 pages, which broke down at 108 per day, which is below the 150 that I need to be on target for my 50,000 page target for the year. But I know that we can catch that up, so it's fine. My average star rating was 4.1. So it was a really good um, month in terms of the quality of the books. My most disappointing, and it is disappointing because I have really high hopes for this, was The Villa. I actually, by Ruth Kelly, sorry, this comes out when you're watching this, I feel like it's about to come out. Um, when is it coming out? 22nd of June. So yeah, the end of the month. I completely forgot that I'd read this this month. And I know it's been a busy month, but this just didn't stay with me at all. I think I said it in the clip, I feel like it's one of those books that you'd read quite happily, enjoy at the time, and then like leave it in the hotel or next to the pool or whatever for the next person to find. Um, it wasn't, you know, bad or offensive. It just hasn't stuck with me. So that's my most disappointing. And then favourite was really hard because obviously I gave Loveless five stars. That was my only five star read of the month. I gave out one, two, four point fives, which was this one in yellow face. Um, so obviously you th I was like, well, Loveless is clearly my favourite read of the month, but I'm not sure it is. <laughs> um, it, because in terms of like enjoyment, this one I, was my favourite read of the month when I was thinking about it. Loveless I adored and appreciated, but it was a slightly uncomfortable reading experience just because of my own personal stuff with that book. Um, so I, it just doesn't feel quite right to put it in as my favourite, if that makes any sense. Anyway, the book I've gone for is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. This was really fun. This was like, if I was giving like quarter stars, this would have been a 4.75, I think. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I'm very excited for the second book to come out, which is later this year. I think it's like September, October time it's coming out. So this is my favourite read of May. I don't know what to tell you. That was a plot twist nobody saw coming. It's also a book I bought in May. So that's nice. Um, My TBR. Let's talk about my TBR. So my TBR at the end of April was at 30 books. My TBR at the end of May is at 42. So even though I read 10 books this month, I also brought in more than that so I'm up 12 <laughs> from from um April but that's okay because I've said all along like 50 books I feel like is my threshold so we're now at 42 um in terms of balancing the books so I had nine books off my TBR because one of the books I read was the audiobook for cults which wasn't physically on my TBR so it doesn't count um so nine out and I brought in 21 books this month 21 books and that's a mixture of, if we just have a quick look at my stats at the back, my TBR list at the back, which is here. Mm. Um, that's mostly, right, so I bought those. I had a couple of lovely gifts from people, so thank you. I had an arc from publishers, and then I bought nine books yesterday. So there we go. So yeah, I um, had 21 in. <laughs> <laughs> in May. So uh, in terms of balancing, I hauled 12 more than I read in May, which isn't great. But thankfully, I'd already built up some slack because at the moment, weirdly, we are balanced exactly. 
So I have hauled 61 books at this point in the year. So the halfway point of the year, I've hauled 61 books and I have read 61 books, which means that going into June, I need to make sure that I'm reading more than I'm hauling so that we can stay balanced. Um, I've never decided what I was going to do if it became unbalanced. It was just more to track it, but I feel like I probably need to think about that. So let me know if you have any ideas on what I should do if I uh, get to a tipping point. Do I have to unhaul books? Mm, maybe not. Anyway... Thank you for making it to the end of yet another very long reading vlog from me. I really do appreciate all of you for being here. Um, if you got to this point in the video, leave me any witch or demon emoji of your choice for this really fun book that I really enjoyed this month. Please subscribe if you would like more of this chaos and I will see you in the next one. Thanks everyone. Bye.